Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast, and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. Sounds so what, good to me. What are you saying? Drug of choice. Drug of choice. What's your drug of choice? Advil. Oh, Advil. Yeah. Yeah. I always hear that. It makes a good maraca, too. I think that messes up your gut biome. Well, it could, but it's like it's better than having pain mm. and the other options. Oh, I believe me. I read, about, the, I read the labels. What about Kratom? I don't know. Tell me about it. Well, Is that your it. drug of choice? Well, I've dealt with it. I've messed with it. They sell it at smoke shops. It's like a herbal, uh, but it's a pain reliever, but you can get a habit. Yeah, but that's no it, good. It's like opiate yeah, type no of vibe, but it's not opiate. No, no. It's an opiate replacement. I don't know. It's 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 got its dangers as well. Anything that's got dangers, I stay away from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though this has some danger, but you just can't do too much. I do one. Take one. That's mm-hmm. it. And then I don't do it again for two days, something like that. I travel a lot, and I have arthritis in both my knees. Are you still touring? Mm-hmm. We're here with Night Bob. What are you famous for? Loud shows. Being, um, being a tour manager and a yeah, sound not so much. It's more it's more the the mixing the live mixing thing that I'm famous for because I uh, I worked with some bands that were despised at the time that later on in life became like massive cultural influences. Like who? Like the New York Dolls. I never heard of them. Yeah, I figured as much. You're too old, <laughs> you know. Well, you're too young. Either yeah. one. I don't know. Well, you know. So, I'm too uh, something. Well, let's well, let's of go. Of course, to, I've heard of the New York let's, Dolls. Let's go something a little more in your orbit, like this guy Iggy Pop. Right? Yeah. What about Iggy Pop? He had this band called the Stooges. Right? Yeah. And I wound up working for them mm-hmm. because nobody else wanted to. Right when they played at Max's Kid, Kansas City mm-hmm. in the summer of '73. Right. And that was quite a. Uh, Moment in time show. Wow, what ha- that was during Raw Power era? or Close to the end of Raw Power. Raw okay. Power had about six months to go before the band imploded, exploded. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he kind of invented punk rock music, didn't he? I, mean, he, I don't like, know that's about bef- that. Well, that's before, this, that's before the Ramones, and he was definitely, like, they, they, they were influenced by Iggy, weren't they? I don't, you know, that's a difficult thing. If you if you look back in history, I mean, are you going to tell me that Jerry Lee Lewis wasn't like punk rock That's in true. some way? That's a good point. That you know, I mean, throwing that Even Bob Dylan. Well, yeah, you know, people who who like step outside the norm. You that's know? So true. So it's like that's a hard mantle to wear. I agree. You know, as being like the the grand pop of punk. Yeah, or and then also like Iggy like took notes from Jim Morrison too. So then you could even like put it to Jim Morrison, who always gets like the ultimate hippie non cred vibes going on. But the thing with you, have you ever did you ever see the Doors? No, I, mean, I, I saw lo- the Doors I, twice. I, I Let didn't me tell see you, them, but I love them. One thing I learned from going to see the Doors uh-huh. was how an audience loves drama right he didn't jump around yeah you know he fell down every now and then it was like a big deal mm-hmm. you know what i mean he would go and right. drop to the floor Everybody's like, oh, right and i was you like said, you just said something wonderful the audience loves drama they do they yeah. do they're you know come on it's like you know it's like feed yeah. the christians to the lions drama you're right you know blood and guts i love that yeah, like too. even gladiators they were all just like so you could watch human beings now human that, beings like to watch human beings get killed. That's punk rock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gladi- Yeah, if you want to talk about the first punks were gladiators. <laughs> that, hacking each other. Yeah, I mean. Thumbs that, down. That is, Thumbs that down, is boys. Punk rock. You're right. That, that's where it started. <laughs> now, find your wounds and we'll see you next week. <laughs> oh, my week. God. That's fucking funny, dude. That's crazy. So, so how long were you running sound when all of a sudden you're running sound for Iggy and the Stooges at Max's Kansas City? I'm going to give you a tidbit of information. Okay. I wasn't running sound for Iggy and the Stooges at that time. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a, a gross uh, misunderstanding, mainly because when people started to write about this stuff like mm-hmm. 20 years later, yeah. I was at that point a sound engineer, you know, pretty much a touring sound engineer, mm. well-known, blah, blah, blah. So, so just everybody assumed. just thinks. Yeah. But I was a backline guy. Oh, okay. I, I humped amps up that flight of stairs. That's why nobody wanted to do it. Right. Because they ordered a lot of amps because they, they were fly dates for the uh-huh. Stooges. And they ordered a lot of stuff. And nobody wanted to uh, take it up a flight of steps, a long mm-hmm. flight of steps at Max's. Yeah. You know, so uh, so I, they're, um, 
needless to say, I probably saw the Stooges closer than anybody in the world because I was stage left. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw exactly what was going on. Yeah. And it was pretty interesting. It changed my life. I got to tell you. How so? really did. Just because the kind of fury that that band could could uh, generate. Yeah. Right? And then when they went on stage, they were normal, kind of, mm -hmm. Midwestern guys. Yeah, from Detroit. They had this work ethic. Mm -hmm. You know, people think that, that it was like, you know, that they were like sloppy, drunk, drug guys, but they weren't, you know? No. I mean, it's like there wasn't that, you know, to, from what I saw, I didn't see, I saw a pop get lit, but not the others so much, you know? Yeah. And, um, but they could, they could generate a fury, unlike, uh, the Dolls could do that too, you know? They had this thing, this kind of furious energy that they could uh, put up yeah. and generate. And I hadn't seen that, at least not that close, you know? That it's, like I was saying with the Doors, you know, it's like he would just make these grand moves and the audience would go, <sighs> Right, and this this guy is like going completely nuts in, in people's faces. I mean, with the doors, there was still a bad. He didn't go in. Mike Morrison didn't go in the audience. He stayed on stage. Right, right. There was a barrier, you know, mm -hmm. a, a a gap between him, between the band and the audience. Pop, there was no gap. Right, it was like out you go. Dolls, the the first doll shows that I went to were at the Mercer Art Center, and that was kind of like theater in the round. You know, I mean, if you see pictures from back then. It's like there's people on stage, there's people hanging out. It was like everybody was in the band, which yeah. is an interesting concept, you know, that it was a group of, you know, like-minded individuals. It was all about breaking barriers down, I guess. I don't even think they were thinking in those terms. It was just like they wanted to have a good time, you mm -hmm. know, and it was like these guys are making some music, right? Yeah. I'll tell you for the truth is it's like if you wanted to go to a show where the girls were at, you went to the doll show. Right. Because there were more girls there than if you were going to see, like, Jethro Tull. Right. Or, you know, some other mountain or something like that. That was more of a, a guy thing, you know, sausage mm -hmm. factory. And uh, you go to the doll shows, there were girls, and they were dressed up. And there was, like, if you were there, you were, like, in the minority. Mm. So there was a lot of a lot of fun to be had. So you're saying the the women were drawn to the dudes that look like women? No, not so much. They just, they were lo they, they didn't look like women. You know, I mean, it's yeah. like it's another misconception. Look at the pictures. You know, I mean, it's yeah. like yeah, they had they stole from their girlfriends' closets, mm -hmm. but it's like they didn't look like women like men nah. look like women now. Right. Look at the back of the first Dolls album. That's what they looked like, and mm -hmm. girls like that. You know, I mean, like yeah. look what you have to look and see what was going on at the same time. You know, Grateful what? Dead. Yeah, you know, is that what is that what they were? What girls are looking for? Jerry Garcia, mm. Bob Weir? No, not no. really. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> you know, fusion. You know, yeah, like no. I love that guy in in Mahavishnu Orchestra with the violin. Uh, you know, I mean, it's so like ah, I don't think so. It was unusual. You know, I mean, it was like uh, yeah. it was attractive. And there was a thing going on in England too. Right. That was that was kind of like the Sex Pistols. Well, no, Sex Pistols are way farther down the line. Sex Pistols are in like 76, 77. Yeah. I'm talking 72 here. So you know? what was going on in England then? Well, you had Slade and the whole glitter thing, oh, you know, T-Rex. Right. T-Rex, yeah. You know, Slade, stuff like that. You mm -hmm. know, there was interesting. You have to remember it nowadays, you know everything the second it happens. Mm -hmm. Right back then, you had to you found out about these bands by somebody in a record store playing you a record right right or you went to uh times, magazine times square and bought melody maker and yeah. i used to buy melody maker because i would go to england and i would buy marshall lamps really cheap because mm -hmm. they were really cheap and the dollar was really strong you could fly to england mm -hmm. on a thursday night yeah spend friday and saturday there buy four say two marshall 100 watts and two high watt 100 watt amps band them together, check them as, uh, as excess baggage, mm -hmm. and fly home and make a lot of money. And I was doing this every other weekend sometimes. Wow. It was good fun. How much money could you make? You could make a lot because Marshall Amps were really hard to get here. Wow. And, everybody, and at the time, everybody thought that British Marshalls sounded better than American Marshalls. Yeah, that's, I think that's because of the electric current, though. The See, current you can believe so that all stronger. you want, you know, but that's yeah. not true. No. That's because by the time it gets to the circuitry, it's been through a power transformer, and that part's all the same. Oh, I see. Right, but they want you to believe. See, that's the thing that was great about me, you know, the, all of this <laughs> urban legend, right, right, that people, bl bl you know, they're mm -hmm. like, no, that's not true. You know, it's like, if you want to believe that, I will let you buy into that. Right. You know, it's like, 
but that's the way it was. You know, Why did they sound better then? They don't. Oh, uh, it's the same. <laughs> they don't. You, you could have yeah. just bought U.S. ones and sold you them as British ones. You can't find them, and they cost like twice as much. Yeah. Uh, that's seriously. That's so interesting, because now the pound is worth more than the dollar. It would be the opposite. I'm, yeah, I, I think there's still bargains to be had over there. But to, uh, that, but to, as a city, it's mm. expensive. I don't know if you've been there recently, but it's yeah. only, I can't afford, even I can't afford to take a cab there. Yeah. Unless you're paying for it. Yeah. You know? Well, we could split it. Well, yeah, even then I'd be going like, how much? Did you ever? That's what, what got fired, got me fired from Jesse Mallon. Oh, really? Yeah. What happened? I took a cab to, to get something from a rental house. And he fired you? No, his manager at the time did. Oh, he did? Yeah. Because you took a cab and it was too expensive? It cost expensive. like 30 pounds, which is like 45 bucks. <laughs> his manager was like, what the, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, hey, I'm not taking this item up and down on the tubes, all right? right, right. Yeah. yeah. Like, all right, that's enough for you. Well, I think there's a delivery coming. That's out. cool. I know it sounds like a haunted house, right? Yeah, yeah. Men in chains. Did you ever work with Lou Reed? Um, on a, just on a, uh, uh, I get never for him. I never got a paycheck from him, yeah. right? But uh, at one point, I meet him or oh, see plenty him, of right? times, plenty of times. Yeah, um, with the dolls, yeah. right? There was this whole Max's thing, right? Uh-huh. And, and like, you would meet these people. You know, you'd sit at a table, and there'd be Lou Reed, David Bowie, and in a way, everybody was kind of equal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you have to sit over there. You know, I mean, it was like we're all in this together kind of thing. Right. You know, and they weren't exactly selling millions of records either. You know no. what I mean? The, it's like, but as far as like one-on-one stuff, when I was I, I, when I decided the first time to retire from touring, um, I was selling guitars on 48th Street. Uh-huh. Right. And he was have he would have guitar work done, and. Um, he frequented the shop. Which and, one? Uh, Cybercent Music, otherwise known as Little Wee Buy. Little Wee Buy. Yeah, it was the original Wee Buy until you know, old man Friedman got the big space across the street, and then let his son have the little space. Yeah. You know. Oops. Oops. There you go. One side out <laughs> of these cheap headphones. Hold on. Yeah, I'm in stereo now. Okay, good. But it was all right. Uh, and Alice Cooper you worked with too, right? Not really. I, Alice Cooper, uh, I never toured, well, toured, I never got a paycheck from him. Right. I got involved with doing a backline for uh, Alice Cooper, um, like 73, just before the release of Muscle of Love, right? And they wanted to change from the... I love that. <laughs> it's fucking nice. It's like being, they're doing a delivery here. I feel, uh, I feel yeah, like we're yeah, doing yeah, a loadout. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. you just drop that. Yeah. You know, it's like these union guys. What can I tell you? All right, well, let's take, let's take a second. All right. I, let them finish it. I was thinking about that when I was walking over. What? Oh, just the way, you know, how shows are nowadays. You know what I mean? Do you go out to shows? Some, yeah, I, I wind up at them. You know. That's different than going to shows. I go to yeah. shows. You know, yeah. I mean, like, do you buy tickets? I bought one to Leonard Cohen before he passed. Oh, I get that. Yeah. No, because no, it, it's like the culture is different now. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's like it's not to, you know, where do people go? I don't know. I'm at that point in my life where it's like getting me to go out. You really have to work on it to get me to come see your band. Yeah. For, for some reason, you know, and it's like I don't go out to see bands just for something to do. Right. You know, uh, I, if I hear about it, because I, I, let's take Degeneration, for instance, uh-huh. right? I heard about them from this guy, Matt Melnick, right? Also yeah. known as Matt the Rat, right? He plays in these grindcore bands. And he said, uh, you know, I'm doing a guitar tech thing for this band. I think you'd really like them. I go, what are they called? He goes, Degeneration. I go, I like the name. He goes, you should come see them at CBGB's. Right, so when Matt Melnick tells you to go check something out, you go check it out. And to back it up, uh, I was talking to Bob Gruen, and Bob Gruen said, "Yeah, you definitely should go see them." You know, so so I went and I saw them play. And at that point, they weren't even the final form. I think uh, they just started. Yeah, it was early. It was I think it was pre Danny, pre Danny Sage. I think uh, I saw him at CBGB's, and. Uh, I was like, all right, this is interesting. 
you know, I mean, I like bands when they have a fury, yeah. you know, and they had a fury going, you know, so it's like, this is good. I know how hard that is to do. What you year know? was that? Oh, how, oh, God, it has to Late be. Late 80s? Nah, nah, 90s, early 90s. Early 90s. 92, okay. maybe, something like that, very early on. And then... Uh, and did it remind you of, like, the sort of heyday of Max's or anything like that? In a li- not when I first saw them. Mm. I just thought, I was like, this is interesting. Let's see, you know, with all these bands, I try not to be too ju- judgmental, you know what I mean? It's like you go like... There's something here. Let me come back and see him like four or five shows from now or something like that before you make any kind of decision. You mm-hmm. know, my big thing is if I can remember a, a single song title, you move to the next step, mm-hmm. right? Because there's plenty of times I go see a band and I can't, you go, they were loud, they were frantic, but I can't remember the title of one song. Right. That's a bad sign to me. Yeah. Right. Um, but the thing that reminded me of, of like that earlier era was the social scene that was built around it the green door parties oh yeah i heard, about, I heard those. about those yeah, yeah so that's all before your time from right? jesse yeah. jesse told yeah, us yeah. About yeah that, that was yeah. i'm telling you it was a place to be just like at one point max's was the place to be because um the mickey ruskin version of max's was very different than the later tommy dean version of max's right and when you went to the first one it was actually a door policy, you know, that you would come to the door, and if the person at the door didn't like the the cut of your jib, they would say, couples only. Right, they still do that shit. At well, I'm sure they do, yeah. but I mean, like, they were trying to keep it to a certain kind of clientele. They didn't, you know, I mean, the artists right. and some musicians. It was predominantly artists, right? Mm. There, you know, at the Green Door thing, we could be kind of the same way. You had to know about it. You know, I mean, there were flyers passed out around the East Village, and it was a place to be. Mm-hmm. It was a good, you know, it always went, and you could, you know, because, you know, it's like you know, when people gather for some kind of reason, you know, and it's easy, you know, in the pre internet days, it was yeah. very easy to, to find out what was going on. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd go, you'd hang out, you see Bob Gruen, you see these record company people, right? You see promoters, you see writers. What have you heard? What have you, you know, you, anything, anything catch your ear recently? Because you want to, you know, and like in my business of live performance, mm-hmm. right? You want to you know what's coming around the bend. Yeah, you know, if you just saw something that would that really struck, you know, and, you, and over a period of time, you you learn to trust certain people that they have like good taste or they they can see a trend coming, you know, or uh, you know, without sounding too much like a music business guy, you know, what I mean, because uh, you need to know because you need to, and you know, also it's good to befriend some of these people before the chaos starts. Right. You know, it's like, but now it's different now because there are no, the record companies don't get involved, you know, and there's like the weeding out process is different and all, everything is, what is, what do people judge bands on? The ability to draw 200 people yeah. to Mercury Lounge yeah. to get 200 people to pay? Yeah, well, that what is, is what, that? I don't know. You tell me. That is what they judge people bands on. Yeah. Sad, isn't it? Well, not really. I mean, that's how. Like, that's like creating a scene. You I don't know. You get two hundred people at Mercury Lounge. You got you got yourself. Yeah, two hundred people to pay. Yeah, to pay. You got yourself. Then a, you got something going. You got a career. Yeah. You got, <laughs> I mean, yeah. dude. You, what? What does that mean? You can sell some T-shirts yeah. or something. Yeah. Listen. Oh, you want but the big this, wait? This, you want to hear the big? Here's the big tip to all bands at sea who are okay, listening. Okay, right? we need that. Here's the big tip. Right? What is it? Forget about T-shirts. Mm-hmm. Forget about CDs. T-chains? Right? Coffee cups. Coffee cups. You can't download a coffee cup. Yeah, you well, can't. You, you can't download a T-shirt either. You Wait. can down. You can down. You can print out a uh, the you know what's on the it logo, and yeah. you know turn it into an iron really yeah. easy. You know, or make your own screen or whatever. You know, I mean, T-shirts are passe anyway. You know, people want too much money for them. People will pay fifteen dollars for a coffee cup that cost that you cost that cost you three bucks. Yeah, and that puts gas in your van and pays for a hotel. Hard to room. cart around a bunch of coffee cups, though. Uh, tell you, you got to look at the at the end value, yeah. though. You know, I mean, it's like that's what I think anyway. You can't download it. Everybody you likes can't a fold cup of up coffee. A coffee cup. That's, that's funny. That's their you, problem. You know, our, our mutual friend Matt Nathanson, who uh-huh. is a touring musician, right? At the meet and greet, people get a coffee cup. That's one of his like 
perks. And I, yeah. I still use that coffee cup. He does the meet home. and greet thing, like where you pay extra for the meet. Yeah, you meet and greet, and everyone gets a cup of I coffee. I always just go out and meet everyone without yeah. the pay extra. I'm just thing. saying the I, cup of coffee thing was was as a merch as I a merch. Start yeah. doing the meet and greet, but so I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting topic. You know, yeah. it can go it can go uh, two ways. You know, I mean, like for one, people find well, you'll find a certain amount of people would much rather pay X amount of dollars mm -hmm. to guarantee that they get to say, I really think you're great. Would you sign my coffee cup? You know, yeah. uh, and rather than have to stand outside by the van or mm -hmm. something, they would rather pay X amount of dollars and line up and go and have a couple of minutes of your time one on one. Yeah. Right. Rather than wait outside where you're going like, I fucking hate this city. Yeah. I can't wait to get out of here. There's four of us. I usually all... go to the merch stand though. I'm not like that. I, no, I'm, but I'm just like, saying yeah, that I'm a nice guy. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. There's a Take you know that that's that's a one that's a, that's part of of it trust me mm. you know but it's like when you that's the that is your core audience yeah, it's exactly. like when you become too hip and all of a sudden you have these other people yeah. right they're the ones that that should pay yeah a little bit more a pay for something i don't know monetary the way the way one makes money nowadays has changed you know and, and the thing is like look at it this way right you have a couple of generations of people who think music should be free well, right. everybody does, and then also well, half your friends always just want you to put them on the guest list. Well, that's I mean, that's the first thing you stop. Yeah, I have no guest list. They really go, oh, what are you doing? You go like, the promoter says no guests. Yeah, blame someone else. This is an important. All the bands out there. Yeah, blame someone. Blame else. management. Blame, man, blame the promoter. Blame the club. Everybody yeah. goes, ah, I hate this club. My, ah. my favorite thing is like when somebody's like. You know, it's one thing. It's like, well, when are you playing? It's like, what time are you starting? You know, oh, it's yeah. like that whole thing. Like you're getting all these texts. Like, what time are you starting? It's like, literally the most busy time for you right before a show. And you get like those like texts. Like, what time are you on? It's like, I always want to write back. Like, what would? How do you find out what time shows are when you don't know the member of the per, of With the person in the band? <laughs> like, how do you how do you find out the time? Like, you really like. I'm gotta, guilty and, of that too. I mean, you know? I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I'm not like <laughs> dissing too hard, but I'm just saying it's like it's unbelievable when you are stressed out in a sound check and everything like that. But um, so you also did you work with Kiss briefly? Yeah, and Ace Freely. I do Ace Freely now. Yeah. Oh, you do work with him now? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. For like the last twelve years. How's he doing? He's, he's good, all right. Isn't he? Yeah, he's all right. He's sober like thirteen years. He's not, you know. Uh, a lot more fun to be around. Yeah. Sober people, you know, who, you know, it gets old. You know what I mean? He plays better. He's more fun to be around. Right. He's on time, sort of, yeah. you know, and, uh, but it's like, um, I like it. I, he has a good band. He has a good crew. We, we do weekends. Yeah. Like leave Friday morning, back Monday. Can't complain. Do three shows. Come home. Bill. You're front of house for him? Yeah. I'm also the production manager. And we use rental gear all the time. Just come back from six shows in California over two weekends, and I came home in between. Six shows in California? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where'd you guys play? All kind of joints. Uh, Canyon Club, The Rose in Pasadena, someplace uh, Ramona Main Stage. Uh, you know, gigs, thousand. Thousand capacity, really? seven hundred capacity. Yeah, that's killing. There's a fan base. You know, people. You know, this is why you go out to the merch booth and why you be approachable and yeah. why you build the fans. You know, a fan base. Ace is doing that. Well, you know, it's like the whole kiss thing. That it was. It's really important to some people. You know, and it was like an important. Like I don't know where you, what your defining musical moment was. Kiss. Well, really? Well, yeah. one of them. <laughs> for sure, well, then dude. you'd understand, I you do, know, I that, do understand. that all of a does sudden. Does he still do Back in the New York Groove? Yes, he does. That's the one of the classics. You know, and every time they hit a, a, a home run at Yankee Stadium, they play that song. Dude, it's it, that's a legendary. The, the yeah. sound and he didn't that. write that. Oh, he didn't? No. Who wrote that? Uh, I, think the, I think it was the guy from Argent. Mm -hmm. I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, go look it up. He actually says that on stage. He goes, everybody thinks I wrote it. I didn't. So what's the most, what's, what in your opinion is the most powerful of the New York bands from the Max's Kansas City days, like the early 70s or, you know, to, into the 80s or whatever? What's your favorite band? 
Early heartbreakers. Early heartbreakers. Yeah, when they were good, when they were on, nobody could beat them, I thought. And uh, that's Johnny but, Thunders. Yeah, right? it's Johnny Thunders, Walter Lure, Billy, yeah. and uh, uh, Jerry Nolan. Did you know Johnny? Oh, yeah. I roomed with Johnny at the New York Dolls. That didn't last very long. Oh, yeah? yeah. Like, no, he was a good... The, they were, on the road? Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, when I first started, actually, to, I did a million rehearsals with them. Mm -hmm. I worked at this rehearsal studio in, in what is now Soho. Mm -hmm. And the reason I took that gig was because I could rehearse my band for free, because I come from a guitar background, you know, oh, music. You, you played music? I was too. in bands, yeah. I was in bands before I got into any of this working for band stuff for a uh -huh. long time. And um, I met the Dolls there. And uh, at the time, I was kind of like digging fusion. You know, I was, I was working with you know, people like... I uh, like fusion, too. You know, Mahavishnu Orchestra mm -hmm. and uh, Billy Cobham rehearsed his first solo album. Return and, to Forever. Yeah, those kind of... I was into that. And then I saw yeah. the dolls, right? And I went, this, is kind, this has got some cool energy here. It's out of control. I kind of like that out of control yeah. train going off the rails thing. Then I went to a gig mm -hmm. and I was sold. You switched. I well, I didn't know. To I didn't totally switch when I said, uh -huh. but like, uh, if I was going to go see a band, I'd pick the Dolls over those guys in a second. Mm -hmm. You know, just the way it was. You know, yeah. it was more fun. It was chaotic and it was fun. You know, it was like a weird balance. You know, they 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 had some interesting songs. You know, they had a cool audience and everybody was having a good time. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you go see not and not to belittle any of these these bands, but it was serious musicians making serious. Uh, music for serious fans, you know, and mm -hmm. it's like you can, you know, that's kind of like, okay, uh, that's not what I want to do on a Friday night right. or a Saturday night. I want to go and, you know, have, like, fun. have some fun and act like an idiot, you know. And, yeah. You know, so, uh, well, I, yeah. But I also, thought they, they were, were doing something new. Like, it was like, I guess the fusion was new too, in a way, but they were like doing, they were like doing something that was like on the cusp of danger as well. Yeah, it was a, a weird, you know, the, the jazz guys hated it and the rock right. guys hated it. So whenever you have, you know, if you can elicit a lot of hatred out of like two different audiences, Maybe that to me is a plus, right. yeah. a big plus, you know, get some kind of reaction. It was very easy for people to just stand there and go, eh. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm trying to think of any of the other, I mean, like there were other bands from the early 70s who, that were from out of New York, who people don't pay attention to that did it, that were, you know, Really good bands, you like know, who? Uh, stories, the band stories. They had a hit uh, like a like a mid tempo hit with this song, Brother Louie, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. it was, it Louie, was, Louie, Louie, right? Louie, Louie. But they were they were actually more of like a British, you know, uh -huh. you know, high end pop band. If you listen to the records, it was like that was kind of out of character. In fact, most bands when they have hit singles, especially back then when they had hit singles, was the song that was out of character. I happened to Aerosmith. Oh yeah. Right. Their first hit was Walk like no. First hit was Dream On, and it was oh, like yeah. they were that came out during their fourth album. It's on their first album. Mm -hmm. Oh and it really? Became an AM radio staple, right? And they were so mad uh, because four albums later. It four albums a later. Yeah, how'd you that, can. How that happen? Because someone, you know, somebody played it, it, and all of a sudden, you know, it went. The audience went nuts for it. Did you work with them? Aaron I worked Smith? for Earl Smith for eight years. What did you do with them? Front of house. Wow. Argued, argued with them. And you toured? Tor oh, yeah. I did. Uh, I did Toys in the Attic, Rocks. Uh, after that, it was time to go. Things were getting a little too weird, so it was time to go. Too much cocaine? Well, I wouldn't say that, but I would just say that you can, you see when the when the plane is starting to, to stutter. Skim and the, the trees? And the, no, when the tail spin, you can see it, you know, the, the motor's going. Mm. It's about to they're, skim the trees. They're like, it's like having a very difficult time making this record here up at this nunnery in upstate New York, right? Mm. And I'd seen, it, I'd seen, you know, how the, I, listen, I'd seen, I seen the, the downward spiral of the Stooges and the downward spiral of the New York Dolls, right at that time. And by the beginning of '78, I didn't really want to. <laughs> there are all all pro bands like this. You get a year, two years, of, and then it goes. The money kicks in, and everybody goes nuts. There was no money with the Dolls or the Stooges, but the money kicked in on Aerosmith big time. Yeah, and big everybody time. went nuts. I guess you know. I mean, like. Money changes everything. 
like those, you know. And then you have people, and the people who write the songs are making way more money than other people in the band, and the whole dynamic well, changes. They didn't, they didn't evenly distribute the money. No, that's not a good thing either. I thought that if you talk to bands who, you know, we're we're a democracy, we made this music together, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't work out. Because there's usually one or two people who are doing all the writing, and then the others are going like, "I'm just going to fucking coast through this." Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the people are always trying to, you know, ask the Eagles about split songwriting stuff. I think U2 splits all their shit evenly. If it works for you, yeah. great. I don't know. I found I found that democracy in bands does not work. Right. Because bands are usually made up of, of a percentage, a small percentage of really smart people yeah. and a very large percentage of not so smart people. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if the not so smart people can get that one swing boat, uh -huh. you know, uh, that, to, to, to topple it their way, just like politics today, you know, all of a sudden, yeah. you know, I've seen it happen time and time again. Right. As I, I remember talking to this one band. They were signed to J Records, right? And uh, I go, how do you guys make decisions? They go, we're a democracy. And I go, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What, they, what, ba they, what band? This band's Silver Tide, right? Oh. Sold like 500,000 records, and that wasn't enough, right? And uh, uh, Why isn't that enough? Because they were right at the beginning of file sharing, uh. right? They had a record that was being played on 150 radio stations 30 times a week. That's a lot of play. Yeah. Nobody was buying the record because one guy bought the record, converted it to MP3s, and uploaded it, and then gave it to all their pals. You know, it's like the only people who were buying the record were the people who had who didn't have computers or didn't know how to download anything. You know, so I go, yeah, it's really too bad. He goes, why? Why is that? I go, because it's really easy for the stupid guys in your band to get together and convince the swing boat guy and then control the, you know, where your band is going to go. Control the narrative. Right. Control. How did you work with Aerosmith? How did that start? Through, through New York Dolls. Oh, really? Yeah. What, ha what, what happened? Same management. Oh. Uh, right. Who managed them? Uh, Lieber Krebs, David Krebs. David Krebs managed Aerosmith. Uh, oh, okay. Dolls was more Steve Lieber and Marty Thau. But and David, David was involved. And you were doing front of house for the Dolls? Yeah. And then they were like, and then Aerosmith was like a new band coming up or something? Or <laughs> were, they, were they together for a while? Yeah, they were together for a while. But let me, let me tell you this, right? I had gone out, my first major arena tour was with uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I can love them. Pro, prog rock. Brain South God. Surgery. That's the tour I was on. Really? Right, yep. And uh, Ho Down. Oh, that? God. Carnival 9, all Carnival that kind of stuff. <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor truck. You know, it had a drum set that was yeah. so heavy it had its own truck. Rest yeah. in peace, Keith Emerson. You know, yeah, and, and Greg Lake. You yeah. know, I mean, uh, but I went out and I did uh, four months with them, flying every day, which will make you nuts. I smashed up my first hotel room on an Emerson Lake and Palmer tour, right? Because why did you do that? Because when you're flying every day, mm -hmm. every day, yeah, you start going nuts. Well, after a while, you just start to lose the plot. You're in a bubble, yeah. you know. What do you see? You see the hotel, mm -hmm. the cab to the airport, the ride on the plane, which is very different than the ride on a plane today. First, you could smoke. Right, and I was there were like thirty English guys and four Americans. Right, so you got these English guys who are like drinking and smoking, like. Rah, 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 rah. Mm -hmm. Then you take over a plane when you got thirty people, mm -hmm. you know, and like, and then you'd go, you you'd land, you get another cab, you go to the hotel, you put your bags down, then you go to do a load in, mm -hmm. right? Then you would go and set up four truckloads of stuff, right? The band would come in, play Carnival Nine, right? Everybody, everybody would have a, some dinner. They do you do the show. You tear all this shit down. You put it back in the truck. Truck would take off. You go back to the hotel. Repeat again mm -hmm. for four months. Maybe yeah. a day off here and there. After a while, you begin to lose the plot. I smashed up a hotel in, in uh, Portland, Oregon, and it cost me under $100 uh -huh. for a broken lamp and a broken bathroom door. Right. So And so I got it out of my system. Were you on that. drugs? Or no, I wasn't. We were just... Ha we were just uh, partying down we thought i thought somebody died in the bathroom you know what i mean because uh, it was like nobody was yes yeah, so i broke it down the, the lamp was another thing that was just for fun <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah someone threw a lamp. So then, for, but th- through the Emerson, point, yeah. the point of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer is, I when I came back from Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, I was offered the Dolls gig, uh. and I took the Dolls gig. Right, and then I went to an Emerson, Lake, and Palmer show about two months into my work with the Dolls, and they went, what are you doing now? And I said, you didn't come back. I go, well, I have this gig. And they go, what are you doing? They go, New York Dolls, right? And they said, oh, we can't believe how your career has plummeted. Oh, really? To go from a band like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer playing stadiums yeah. to some crappy band, right? Uh-huh. Crappy, crappy band, right? And I went... I don't have to lift anything. They went, what? I go, all I do is mix the band and we fly everywhere. They went, are you serious? I went, yeah. White glove, nothing. Don't lift, don't drive, you know. And we work weekends. It's really good. That's cool. And there's way more girls at a doll show than there are. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, that makes sense. This is 1974. For all you youngsters, and I'm talking probably about everybody listening to this, Mm -hmm. things are very different then. You know, I mean, it's like people went to shows. Shows were cheap. Which brings another thing. I mean, it's like... like $5 tickets. $5 t-shirt. You know, I mean, like five dollar ticket, eight dollars, something like that. You know, fifty shows. I've seen two fifty shows. Yeah. When I went to see Led Zeppelin at the Fillmore East, I was going, "That record sounds good, but I don't know about that Page guy." You know, it's, uh, <laughs> he's gonna have called me on this. You were wrong. Well, no. Here's the thing: is like I saw them play. I saw them play with the Yardbirds uh, at Anderson Theater, and I didn't think it was that good. You know, and I was like, I remember going over to the Fillmore East. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna spend five bucks to sit Jeez, in the orchestra. Extra, you know, I mean, because the other two bands are not very good either. I want bang for my buck. I go, let's go sit in the balcony for two and a quarter, right? So we went up in the two and a quarter. We saw Led Zeppelin. I go, like, we should go downstairs and get orchestra seats for the late show, because the uh, the two bands after them was uh, Porter's Popular Preachers, which was a gospel act, and Iron Butterfly. And Iron Butterfly, all throughout their set, people kept yelling to bring back Led Zeppelin. So we were like, not only were they good, like playing a 25-minute set, they, it was like they, the audience was so behind them, they kept going, you guys suck, bring back, you know, bring back Led Zeppelin. We're going, spend the five bucks. I got to ask something, because I've, sure. I've never known somebody who was around in the 70s and 80s, mm. whatever, in the New York City music sure. scene. Mm-hmm. When a show is hot today, tickets sell out instantly right. and then you got to go on StubHub or scalpers right. like back then when you wanted to go see zeppelin do you just walk up and buy a ticket at the you, box office there's the yeah you did you know For everything so pretty Stooges, much yeah. The dolls. yeah 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 some depending on the kind of draw you know i mean people did you know it was like it wasn't as it got bigger as time went on, mm-hmm. you know, but it's like I never bought advance tickets for anything. So I remember the, the first oh, time day of, That's crazy. Day of show, Walk right? Up. I remember that when the Stones played Madison Square Garden in 1969, right? They did a ticket lottery where you had to send in an envelope because they wanted to stop the, the scalping thing of people buying, buying a lot of tickets. And you'd send in an envelope. So I sent in 50 envelopes, <laughs> right? And got a bunch of tickets, right? And then I was like that guy in uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. You know, I was in, in college studying art, and I was selling Rolling Stones tickets, right? And the hippies were saying, man, it's not good to make, you're making money off of music, that's not cool. I go, do you want to go or not? You know, it's like, pay the money. You know, but that's, that's the way it was, you know? No, you, you could, it wasn't the kind, it would become later on in the 70s a massive cultural thing but i mean back then very few bands sold that it's like now very few bands play madison square garden you know rock bands anyway you know and that most bands play smaller venues play like uh 300 to a thousand kind of places Mm -hmm. look what's going on here right i mean you got madison square garden then where'd you go before that used to have uh you know, the Beacon, that's 3,500. Then you go down, then you go into your Bowery Radio Ball. Radio City Music Hall, 6,000. Yeah, 000. yeah, you know, I mean, like, that's a tough sell because that's an expensive hall to work in, mm-hmm. you know, so, but, and tickets were cheap, you know, so t- you could get, you know, it wasn't like you had to, you know, buy it in advance. There was no internet. People have to remember that the internet really doesn't start to make an impact until 1996. 
And so even then, that's we're talking twenty years before. You know, you really could, didn't make an impact till like the early two thousands. Well, now there was there was an there was a, there was an I, there was no I, social media or anything. No, thank God. You know, but uh, I mean, like, uh, but there still was. You could find out things. Yeah. You know, there were search engines, and you could find out. The, I remember it was like if you wanted to buy tickets, you had to go pick up a village voice. Or get the entertainment section in the New York Times on Sunday. Those That's things used to mean so much more, like the Village Voice. Oh, yeah. That, that, those Village Voice type jams used to be like, that used to be the internet. That's where you got yeah. all the information. If you got legitimized in the Village Voice, you were legitimate. Absolutely now, true. Nowadays, those things just don't mean jack shit. It doesn't like, exist. It's you know? gone. Yeah, it's, it's gone. I, I would go through the voice to see who's playing. Yeah, right. I guess it's it's gone, yeah. yeah, and you'd write yeah, yeah. down. You'd it's write down in your in a every uh, Wednesday in you your would calendar look for that uh -huh. for that red uh, red uh, paper thing and like yep. where's the voice? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely yeah, so. a staple. Yeah, that's how you found out. Now it's I find it's hard to find out when bands are playing. Yeah, you know, because there is no real. Uh, how do you find out who's playing it? You have to go to Bowery Ballrooms yeah, website, or you follow or, them on social media. Even that, there some people are asked behind on that. You know, it's like, oh, I forgot to list that show. Bands in town. Stuff what about like Steely that. Dan? What about them? Did you work with them. Too, Twelve right? years of that. Twelve years. Yeah. Doing front of house. Nope. Doing what? Better job. Much better Tour job. Tour manager. No, not really. I was, my official title was road manager, but I kind of okay. looked at it as kind of like entertainment director for the really smart, the two smart guys. Who were the smart guys? Uh, Walter, Beck, Walter Becker, uh -huh. who was the best, and Donald Fagan, who was, it was also, he was a very smart guy, but he was not nowhere near as much fun to hang out with as Becker. Why? I don't know, he was just a different kind of person. You know, he was a little more withdrawn. Becker was like, he liked to push the envelope on things, you know. Like what? I swear I had... Party I had, wise, you mean? No, they didn't party. You know, I mean, there was no... Push, then how did he push the envelope? Well, it was like, <laughs> I want a helicopter from this gig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I can make that happen, right? So and then come back and go, I can get you a chopper. It's $9,000. It will save you 20 minutes do it right i'm like all right so we're in you would do it oh yeah so we were so here we are right we're in uh those are the stories i'd be like well, you know what i'm gonna go to barney's and just blow well here's here's, here's wait wait here's That's the deal now do. so you have to understand this Fuck. you have to under get some boots wait <laughs> yeah like they like they were fashion plates were, those yeah, too yeah, right yeah, yeah. Well, that's why. The they were like the same spending. clothes for fucking 12 years yeah right but see, the thing is we're playing uh where's all the pot grown in northern california Humboldt County. I don't know. We're playing this gig up at a, like a, a winery in Humboldt County, right? They travel by private jet, the two of them, and me and another two people, right? And so the jet would land, and you have to get in the car, and it took 45 minutes from where the jet would land to where um, the gig was. Well, they didn't like that. It was a long time to be in a car for them. They yeah. get cranky guys. What can I say? Uh, interesting so, though, you know, and... Uh, so that, that was why, like, can you get a chopper to get us out of here? I go, I go well, let me look into it. I come back, and I go, 9000 bucks. It'll save you 20 minutes. And they go, but it'll be a chopper. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So, boom, we do it. So there we are. We go, after the show, take the car to the, to the chopper port, right? And it's a black chopper and two guys in black jumpsuits, right? It looks right out of, like, paramilitary kind of like, you know, uh, we're the rebel guys in the mountains of Humboldt County kind of thing, right? So we're in this helicopter. And at night, these helicopters don't fly very high. We're flying over rooftops mm -hmm. of pot farms, right? And Becker turns to me and goes, great. This is where we get shot down by pot farmers. And I go, like, what a great song that would be, you know? He goes, like, Especially if we down. lived. If we, well, now, there's, there's a lot of interesting you, references to a lot of interesting things in uh, – in steely dance songs yeah yeah that's why people, some people like them there's like a lot of deep weird meanings to stuff yeah. that people like well, they're to unique to, as hell you know but they're, they're very i'll tell you they're super talented and they were always you know pushing the envelope on testing me on things you know what i mean like, like uh, um what venues were they playing back then 
Uh, they they could do multiple nights in 2,500 seaters. Uh -huh. uh, then they moved to strong having strong support, like having uh, Steve Winwood as a special guest. Then they moved into sheds, you know, into the eight to ten thousand seater thing, which was good for them, bad for me because they would only have to work half as much time. Uh -huh. Right. So and like my thing with them is like we would pick a city and we'd base in one city for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and fly out and fly back because they could afford to do that. Yeah. You know, they sold out all these shows and they like to, you know, they, they get want, to know a town. Well, they like to. Yeah. Like we stayed in Chicago for five weeks. Yeah. You know, and they uh, still do that. And they play eight nights at the Beacon. Yeah. Well, yeah, they do. Yeah. With most of them live here. So it's not really like a big, that big a, a thing for them. But, you know. The thing with them is that, that uh, the music was really good. It changed the way I listened to music. And what working with them in, in the studio and stuff, you began to see, you know, like in the beginning, I couldn't hear what they were hearing. And then over a period of time, it, it, I was able to fine tune in more to why they, what they were hearing that I wasn't hearing. And what were they hearing that you well, weren't they hearing? Were, the, the, you know, it wasn't really precision because they moved away from precision. They were looking for a certain groove, you know. I mean, like, because before they go on, they, the band would play some kind of intro and they'd be going like, ah, we're going to have to rehearse this tomorrow. And I was like, this sounds great. What do you mean, you know? And it was just, there's something about, uh, you know, the, the groove that wasn't really mm. flying for them. They're perfectionists. Eh, not really. You know, I mean, Fagan, yes. Do uh, uh, Donald Fagan, yes. Because I worked on one of his solo records, and at one point I had to, I had to leave, you know, because it was too much moving drums around and stuff like that. Mm. Becker was different. Becker was, was much more, you know. He played guitar, right? Played guitar and bass. He plays bass. On, uh, most of the times you see him in videos he's pl uh, from the 70s, he's playing bass. Hmm. And then uh, uh, playing live when I was with him, it was playing guitar. Is Steve was Steve Gad the drummer? Uh, not when I was with him. He played on plenty of records. Huh? Oh, okay. Um, but that, it was interesting. What do you think time. of the music scene now in New York City? Um, it's you know it's fragmented. Uh, I don't really. I wait for somebody to tell me that there's something I should go to see. I don't go searching for it. When was the last time you, somebody told you there's something to go see? Uh, I went and saw this band, the Earthlings, uh, oh, yeah. on uh, uh, Wednesday, over at the Delancey. How was it? It was all right. I liked it. You know, I was having. I thought it was you okay. No, uh, it I sounds know familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So it it's sounds like, like one of Dave Catching's bands. That's what I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's Except what I, I know. Yeah. I know right? Dave. Yeah. You, you know Catching? Oh yeah. He was on the podcast. Oh yeah, he's a good yeah. guy. He man. Is, like, he's a good friend. He's one of the best kind of dudes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's like, Eagles of Death Metal. Yeah, that, uh, that studio he's got out there. Mm -hmm. well, we went guy. out there and, and, de la Luna. and interviewed him out there. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that's totally perfect. You know, it's like, no, actually, nothing's really to me. No, I mean, I know things that are going on. That like, there's a, um, there's a New York band called Tempt, right? And they're really good, mm -hmm. but they're they're. They don't do the club scene here. Yeah. They they play like they'll play Arlene's groceries, like say, or cutting room, like I don't know, every five weeks, something like that. Because mm -hmm. they have a core audience. Now they're signed to a real record deal, believe it or not, and they have real management. You know, and they're gonna probably spend all the next year in Europe, because that's where the money is. Yeah. I mean, that's how all bands that. The money's I, on the road. The money's in Europe. Why is that? Because people because they're. The audience is more open, and if they if they like what you do, they'll stick with you. That's what they say. It's what happens. Let me tell you. I hope yeah. so. I'm I'm going back. Where, I, I used to say, have a pretty decent base over there. Where Spain? I mean France. I did really well, and yeah. then in, in the UK for a while too. I mm -hmm. did okay. So that's I'm telling I'm you. Hoping, I'm hoping that uh, yeah they're, they'll stick with you, man. I hope I'm telling so. you. you. Should go to Spain. Try and get oh, whoever yeah. books you Spain to try. It's a big music scene. It yeah. Really, because they I didn't have it. it. You know what I mean? They were yeah. under a suppressive government for a long time, mm. right? So now it's all kind of fresh and new to them. And they, they you know, I find the Europeans just, they just, they're, they're, you know, it's not like here. It seems like if you're not, if you're into this, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't listen to any of that. You know, yeah. which is a, a big mistake for any any person who loves live music or any musician. You know, you need to listen to a lot of different things and find out. Because if it's working for somebody, there's something to be found in it. 
mm-hmm. you know it may not be working for you but if you know if it's if you're reaching people you know that's why I, I try you know i try not to say too much you know i mean it's like i have a friend who mixes ariana grande mm-hmm. right and it's not that's not my cup of tea at all you right. know what i mean because to me there's concerts and there's shows yeah and that's a show right right I'm not that interested in shows. She's very talented. She was very nice. It was a great show. What's the difference between a concert and a show? Singing, dancing, video. A concert's you know, more like about the music. It's the about the music, about, about the, singing, the dancing. Hype it. I don't know if it's hype. You know, I mean, it's like people. You know, it's like, what's the difference between Broadway and Off Broadway? I you know, know, production. Oh, okay. You know, bigger lights, bigger this. You know, More you dancers. get twenty thousand people mm-hmm. in here going targeting an audience, sub teen audience. You know, mm. I mean, I find people who bring their kids to like, I go, like, your kid's awful young to be at an Ace Frehley show. And you go, I want him to be at my, you know, like I, my first show was Kiss. I want, I go, like, you know, I think you should be better off taking your thirteen-year-old daughter to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, <laughs> see, you know, see something else rather than see some, you know. Some, you do I, see a lot of kids at kiss shows these days. You yeah, know? but yeah, I mean, because Ace the parent really doesn't like, cuss a lot or anything. Oh, sure he does. Oh, he does. Yeah, yeah. They all, <laughs> you know, crank. I mean, they all get yeah. cranky. You know, cranky old men. I call them. You know, mm. it's like C O M, cranky old men. You know, it's like, what can I say? What was your? Where did you see Kiss the first time? Uh, I think in Cleveland. Oh, that's a good place to see him. Yeah, yeah. I saw what? What was it? Asylum tour. God, you make that, me. That, how old? Are you? What's your year of birth? Seventy-one. Uh, oh my! So God. I'm not that young. Not that young, but I mean, listen, it's like yeah. I was working for this one band signed to Warner Brothers, and I go, "What's your year of birth?" And they went 1994. Right. And I was like, "Wow." And I go, that's not that long ago. Really. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but now people born in ninety four are like actually old. I know. You know, I mean, how about me, man? Dude, yeah. I was I'm I'm really old. When were you born? Nineteen fifty. Wow. I've seen it all, man. You have seen it all. I have seen it all. You know this place right here where we're at Cafe Bohemia, this mm-hmm. is a legendary place. Like I'm sure John it is. Coltrane played here. I'm sure. Charles 56. Mingus huh? did recorded in here. He was here. still a little too young. <laughs> yeah. So this place Well no, I this, saw some of those guys. Yeah. No, you know, but yeah. here. This oh place, yeah, not yeah. here. No, but yeah. my dad loved jazz and he was you know, we'd play the right play the right. I can't get into music. My my family was very much into music. Oh, really? Yeah. My, both my uh, my father was an electrical engineer, designed missile guidance systems, and lunar uh-huh. lunar landing module, shit like that. So you believe we went to the moon? Oh, of course I do. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His father <laughs> built that shit. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> seen that? I thing, know a lot like, of other things too. That uh, that the uh, well, yeah. now's the time yeah. to spill them. Uh, oh, you want to know? You want to know, you wanna know yeah. about what's really at put yes. that in the, at the Air Force Base in Dayton? Please. Yeah, yeah. Please. Uh, I got a non-disclosure thing. I can't tell you. Oh. Oh man! You really have a non-disclosure? Come on! Really? Really? Doesn't it expire? There's no it, like. It uh, expired. Now no. here's here's the thing, right? They will come after you. Really? You know? I don't yeah. believe they will. I know Cancel they will. Our I'm fearless. <laughs> I'm fearless about these people. I don't yeah. like. You know what? No, I do the believe thing about that the devil the is the devil. The devil needs you to do yourself in. That's the thing. <laughs> no, that's true. No, I got the can, devil. I see what the devil. Saying. The devil is like he his, just points you in the direction. Well, exactly. The devil points you in the direction where you will ultimately do yourself in. That's you will the, make the decision. That's the devil's trick because yeah. the devil could come around and just be like, you know, like bust a couple caps in you or whatever. But then it would ultimately exalt you, and that's and that goes against the devil. Where the devil needs you to. To destroy yourself and then therefore the devil could say see you were never anything but a con do you think there is a devil yeah yeah i think there's evil oh i get yeah, that's different you know, that's, that's different the, that's than the, the devil I, that, yeah. well you know it's semantics i mean i uh, but no i but believe in god i believe for, in the devil but like you, i don't know what those things are i don't think as i don't think god is a guy with a beard in no the sky. I, I agree and i don't think I the agree. devil's like a red thing with the tail yeah. i think the devil is an energy and god is an energy i agree yeah i agree so i went to a revolutionary catholic high school where the first thing they did was deconstruct organized religion yeah and it was really? yeah, it was run by Jesuit priests uh-huh. who are like uh, they live on the dark side of the moon. Let's just put it like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but it was you now 
It is what it is, you know? I mean, like, you, the reality of organized religion is, like, this shit was written, like, 500 years ago for people who roamed around going, <laughs> going to see gladiators yeah. and I mean, shit those, like that. You yeah. know, it's like, really? Are you really going to buy into, you know, uh, buy into that? You know, it's like, that's the first thing they started saying. They buy into what? Buy into anything that's in, some, it, it's in the Bible. Really? You, you know, don't buy into any of it? Not really. No, it's a guy. Like, do you really what about think? The Ten Commandments. Those are seem pretty, pretty solid. Well, like, think about it. Think, just kill, think of what the audience don't was. So it's like your wife, the, it's kind yeah. of basic rules, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I would say it's a book. And it was <laughs> it's, just rewritten. It's kind of, it's kind of a guidebook. So, like, you know, it's like, you know, if you're gonna, you know, if you're not gonna store that, you know, that ham, right? You're gonna fucking die, you know. So it's like, so don't eat ham. All right. So there you go. Do you really? It's like they said to me. They go, Do you really think that Moses stood on a rock and went like this, and the and the water just spread away? I don't know. I, I go wasn't like, there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh no, you know I what? Mean, I, th- Pop, I think you're I- right. Iggy Pop did that with an audience, and they all. Just That's like, different than a fucking <laughs> river Iggy or Pop an ocean. Iggy Pop is like a Bible character in a way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think? Like, what was he like? He was a good guy. He's still a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. I have, you know, I have no issues with him. He's he's very smart, you know. And uh, what no, can I say? As, you know? as a performer, what was her, his like? You well, know? Listen, once he switches on, stand back. Okay. So. Stand back. You know, it's like he when he gets going, you know, it's, just, it's like a different guy. He switches into an alternative universe. You know, and like I know that, you know, I mean, like the. Because you mentioned you were there when the Stooges started falling apart, when the dolls started falling apart, when <laughs> Aerosmith started falling uh-huh. apart. I don't know if you could share any of these stories, but what were those key moments? The like, key moment, well, the key, mo- <laughs> key moments are like when you go from playing good gigs to playing crappy gigs, right? And the record company is not like, they're like, we're not going to, you know, we're, we're pulling support. So when did that happen for the Stooges? The Stooges uh, after the, the release of Raw Power. You know, I mean, like, but they were still they'd been out at the time Raw Power came out. They'd still been they'd been out playing for at least four years, and they were they had marquee value. You know, I mean, people would come and see them. You know, maybe just to throw things at. Them. Later on, it seemed to be just to throw things at them. You know, but uh, you know, uh, we did. I did a, a show. With, I was at a show with them. Uh, at the Academy of Music, right? 3,000, 3,500 seat. It was a great show. It was like opening act, local band Kiss. Then Kiss open for the students? Wait. It was like local band play 20 minutes. Kiss. Right? With everything. You know, with, a, with smoke and fire and the costumes and all that. Then the really, then the, the, the really good local band, which was just Teenage Lust. Then the Stooges, then Blue Oyster Cult. That was New Year's Eve, 1973. And everybody came to see the Stooges because they thought Pop was going to die on stage. Oh, really? Yeah. But see, that's just the way things went. In People the, like drama. Well, the <laughs> audience loves drama. People, right? that's, the, that's the theme uh, of this one. You know? <laughs> Audiences love drama. It's true. And, you know, and it's, it's like it's word love, of mouth. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like someone, someone says. Someone's going to die. Someone's like. I got to see that. Pop is good. he's gonna kill himself on stage. Oh, I'll yeah. buy a ticket to that. Ain't it funny <laughs> that he's outlived he's outlived everybody? I mean I don't know if it's funny. Well not you fun. know? I don't mean it as ironic, f- maybe. Like, what on, do you mean I, though? I don't mean it like that. It's well, I mean, funny, like I'm laughing. Do you mean like his, do you mean like his, I'm yucking it up over here? I'm, <laughs> no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's you know, it's funny. You Who's know? the devil like, now? Right, dude. Like <laughs> this is like a Joe Pesci moment. Funny, what do you mean? Like I'm a clown? Funny? No, I don't mean it that way. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, it's, how weird, I you know it. it's ironic. It is ironic. Because he you know? was like the one closest to the edge at all. But he was like, built the know? tough stuff, man. Yeah, let me tell you. So. Him and Ozzy. Uh, let yeah, me, yeah, Ozzy's still around, uh, too. I'm telling you. Like, it's funny that that's Ozzy's still around. the drama, still, you, you know, know, biting the chicken heads. Yeah, yeah, or, biting the ba- I got this new song, American Night. They, uh, American Night, American Night. They bit the head off the bat of the left and the right. Nice. I fucking love that line, right? That's it's a good, beautiful, it, yeah. It's a good line for some reason. <laughs> yeah. It references Ozzy. Anyway. That's like, uh, I did this, one of the shows uh, at Max's, right? Uh-huh. He used to, you know, he'd go out in the audience and yeah. do the audience thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he, <laughs> I was standing on stage, like, seriously, about as far away from him as you are to me right, right. now, right? And uh, 
decides he wants to walk on the tables, right? And we're like, whatever. Yeah, of course. So he got about two tables. That old chestnut. Yeah, that old chestnut. Table <laughs> slips out, right? He goes down, lands on yeah. a stem glass, punctu Ouch. punctures a hole. Actually, two holes really? right here. And he comes over to me and he goes, uh, I have a cut. And I'm like looking at this going like. I have a cut. <laughs> I have a cut. He goes, put a piece of tape on it. Put a piece of tape on right, it. Right, so he puts a piece of tape on it. He goes back tape. out. Get some gaff. gaff. Or as it was referred to for Michigan band, super tape. Super tape. Give me some yeah. super tape. Give me some Man, super Bob. tape. Just put some tape on it, right? And the tape would 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 fall off because he'd be doing the Iggy thing, right? And at one point, he came over and he did this thing where he he'd go like this. He'd go, and he'd squirt blood at me. And it was like, like oh, sounds my, like a punctured lung. <laughs> my shirt. <laughs> I was like, uh, if only you still had that shirt. Now you could, I could sell it. I on sell eBay. it. I could fucking take the DNA and have my own Iggy. That's yeah. true. My mother threw the shirt out. Damn it. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's gone forever. But uh, at one point, he lost a lot of blood. And I kept telling him he should, he needed to stop. He goes, I, he goes I'm a professional. And I I'm will, a professional. I will finish my show. I'm going to finish my show tonight, Bob. And he did. <laughs> 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 but he's a t he was, you know, it was funny because uh, a bunch of years later, I was doing a, a band opening for... Uh, opening for uh, Iggy on a solo thing, right? Yeah. And he introduced me to uh, his wife. Is like, oh, this is Bob. He used to do a. He used to work for me during the blood and guts phase. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, yeah. There, well, it was one show with a lot of blood. But I did see him do a, you know, go running and jump into the audience, and the audience just move out of the way, and you mm. just go bang. Did you ever work with television? Uh, no, but I saw him play enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, they were local. They were good. You know, I mean, like, like, there were a lot of good bands. Blondie was better than than people give him credit for, mm -hmm. right? Television on a good night was was pretty interesting. You know, yeah. I mean, there were a lot of. You know, I mean, uh, it's like, well, you know, off the top of your head, when you say what was the, the hardest hitting, I go like, I'm telling you, like the summer of '77, I saw you know the. Uh, the heartbreakers and i thought i was like wow this is really something the yeah. only problem is if they paid you by a check the check would bounce yeah right so and i have a bounce check to prove it yeah uh, that at one point it was like you know bands go you know there's a whole thing it's like they were they were you know labeled like a dangerous band that nobody wanted to touch at the time when that was going around were you thinking like oh my god i'm in the i'm on the cusp of all this legendary shit or were you no. just like no we're just in new york doing our no thing we're doing shows you know i got shows no i yeah. wouldn't say jokers but Not i mean jokers but you know i mean my thing is that, that i like the fact that it took well i don't like this fact but i mean it took 30 years for the culture to catch up yeah Right, like you know, like the dolls, right? The dolls were able in like in two thousand five to go out and play festivals and shows yeah, and make great, a couple of records. You know, yeah. and uh, and uh, like What's the what the Arthur documentary? Yeah, Arthur Clark. Which one are you talking about? Isn't that it's his called name? New York Doll? The oh, that's not, Doll. no, that's yeah. that, that's Did I get his name right. Arthur Kane. Oh, sorry, Arthur, Arthur Kane. Arthur Clark, that's the science fiction writer, isn't oh, my it? My bad. Arthur that's all right. Kane. See, yeah, New, New kids Dolls. today. Yeah. I know. We're so disrespectful. We can't even remember yeah. names. Well, you know, it was it was nice to see them make some bank, make us make yeah. some, you know, and and to see the fruit of their labels, the labor, the people would come out. Same thing yeah. with the Stooges. Yeah. And the various, you know, like the Ashton version of the Stooges and the James Williamson version. That's why, of the like, Stooges. life, like, like life teaches you that always, like, you know. Get it, be in the moment, enjoy the moment, because you never know how big the moment actually is. You don't know, it's and it's always big because it's life, and life always delivers. Well, you know, I mean, it's. I always say, craft. You know, do do things to the best of your ability. You never know. Yeah. You know what's going to because there are bands that vanished. You know, and there were bands. You know, it's like I always go back to that, how your career has plummeted. You know, going for the New York Dolls, right? And then, like, I'm oh, I'm right. doing a festival in Spain in 2005. We're yeah. playing to 55,000 people, and they're going nuts. Yeah. You know? And, uh, you know, and it's like, I remember I used to go see the Ramones because they played a short set, and it was, it was fun. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, 
I'd pay, you know what I mean? I was like, you know, I'm working for these big touring rock bands, you know, and it's all like, you know, smoke, you know, flash pots and explosions mm-hmm. and millions of lights and hundreds of watts of PA and, mm-hmm. they're, ah, and people go, ah. Then you go, I come to CBGB's, I pay five bucks, and you see the Ramones whack through, you know, do a 20 minute set and you go like. And do 20 songs. And just like, this is actually pretty good, you know? Yeah. It's like. I mean, the last time I really remember like getting like being like super amazing, like well, one of the last times really is like when the strokes were coming up and they were like creating all kinds of excitement and that like that and that turned out to be like now there's a book about that whole era called I know, Me, Me, <laughs> Me in the Bathroom. It's so weird, you know, because so and now they, they're an influential band to other kids and they were like, I you, can't believe that. I, I know, but you got to give it up to them. I, listen, 2000. Okay. Don't you think? I, I, I mean, let me, you know, let me show you the arc, it? Is, the arc is of the strokes pretty, pretty in dope. my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I decided to stop touring for a while because it's mm-hmm. bad. It, you know, if you go out all the time you, and, you know, for long periods of time, you will. Where do you live? I live in what's now Hudson Square. Okay, where's that? Uh, it's like, corner. it's really not that far. It's about four blocks south of here. Living in Manhattan. In Manhattan, right? And so every once in a while, I take a break, right? right. And around the corner from my loft uh, is Don Hills. Oh, yeah. Right? And Don says, legendary. like, legendary Don Hill, right? And he goes, like, you want to work? And I go, six minutes, couch the console. You know what I mean? I could just, like, go down the elevator, walk around the corner, mix a couple of bands, see what was going on, have yeah. some fun, keep the game Make up. Make a little bread. Make a little buck, you know, a couple of bucks here and there, hang out. See, you know, you see bands when they're busting, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, during that time, I must have thrown the strokes out two or three times mm-hmm. because they were just a bunch of drunks, right? And I was like, who cares about you, right? And then uh, I didn't think much of them. And, uh, Throwing them out of what, Don Hill? Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Get the fuck out. You know, you fucking, you know, who the fuck are you kind of thing, you know? And then I'm in England, right, doing a, a tour over there. England went nuts for the strokes. I'm getting I mean, they're like, they were like the second coming. Well, this <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing this tour in England. They go, why didn't you tell us about the Strokes? Right. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, they're huge here. I go, are you kidding me? Mm. I go, last time I saw them, I was throwing them out the side door of Don Hill. So actually, I was having the, the security guards throw them out because they're a sloppy drunk, you know. And like, uh, I was like, really? He goes, ah. They're, like, ah, they're the greatest thing ever. I was like, this is when I began to go. It's like, mm, maybe I'm, you know, I've lost. Maybe I've lost the plot, mm-hmm. right? Then I went and saw them, and I went, no, I didn't lose the plot. They, they are, you know, they're somebody's kiss, okay? And I can't deny that. You yeah, know, what I mean, great. I mean, they, you know, that first album has great songs. Ding, 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 ding. I was like, whatever, you Good know. It's though. like, listen, if it works, listen. But you're holding them it, up to Iggy and the Stooges. Wait, no. Here's the too. thing, though. If it if it connects with people, yeah. I have to respect it. Yeah, exactly. And the end of my stroke story is is uh, is that no, I've seen them since then a bunch of times. But I was walking down eight, walking up Eighth Avenue, and I looked at Madison Square Garden, and it's and it's in kind of goes. The strokes, the strokes sold out. And yeah, I was yeah. like, I was at that now, show. Now, now, here's the thing. There have been times in the past where I saw bands that I said, these guys are hopeless and they suck. And, and like, uh, you will never amount to anything. Right? I said that about. You'll never make it, kid. I said that about the, cram- I said that about the cramps. We used to have uh, my friends who work in the business. We were always trying to find what was the worst band you've ever seen, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, ah, I saw this band of cramps. You know, it's like the terrible. I go, what makes them so terrible? I go, they don't even have a bass player. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I was, and, and I was like, and then someone come like, oh, you got to see Devo, mm. right? Who became way bigger than, than the cramps. And the cramps be all and end all, uh, like five or six years later, you be, you know, you, I respect them for hanging around, you know, and they were yeah. good. They had their, you know, you know, he was good. Yeah, he Lux was. Interior good. was great. You know, Very I mean, good. it's like so you did a show with him. Might as well throw that microphone away when you were done. Why? Because he went to places you didn't want to go to. Uh oh. What? Yeah. He put it places. He put it places that Uh-oh. you were just like, I'm not touching that. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> so you can have that. You better purel that. Thing. Why, don't, why don't you take <laughs> that? You can have that. that you can that have that you, microphone. You know what? You yeah. keep that. Yeah. That one's That's yours. A gift. That one's yours to take away. It's a gift. I want to, <laughs> why don't you keep exploring that at home? <laughs> 
same thing. Then, like, you know, I thought the cars were horrible, too. You nah, know? dude, the cars were... I, I mean, mean uh, I thought did that... You, I, did you meet Rick Ocasek a yeah. lot, right? He was around. Oh, okay. I did a showcase with them before they were the cars. Before, uh, that's where I met Elliot Easton. That's my, when they were still just the bikes. I don't know. I, I, I think they were called Captain. Anyone? I think they were called Captain. The go-karts. <laughs> the go-karts. <laughs> yeah, the go-karts. Yeah, the they mini were, band. They were still the go-karts back then. <laughs> they, were, they were the skateboards. That goes well. Actually, I think they were, right, called, they were called yeah. Captain yeah, yeah. Swing. Captain Swing. Captain, Captain Swing Captain and a miss. So, yeah, but... Um, I loved the cars because that they were writing those hits when I was a kid, right at that sweet spot in my teenage years, you know, like, a, you I know, get it. all those hits. I can't deny that. You can't deny yeah, those I big can't, hits. No, I, I, I can't, you know what, if it works for you at that point in your life. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, like, you can't, you know, you can't be judgmental about yeah. it, you know. I mean, Sad that he passed, but he went out in, literally in his sleep, I guess. I guess, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was like a... It's sad. I it's covered like, your all I've got tonight. I've been doing that one lately. You know, I mean, like, look at it this way: all the Ramones are gone. Yeah, it's all wild. of them. Not even all the Heartbreakers aren't gone. Right. Three out of four, though. Yeah. You know, but all the Ramones. That's I. I was. I saw. Ed, do you know who Ed Stasium is? Mm -mm. He he engineered and produced a lot of those Ramones records. Oh, okay. And I saw him out in California, and I was like, you know, I can't believe they're gone. What's all. the key to surviving this thing that we're doing, this rock and roll life that we've chosen, Night Bob? That, that's a very I can't answer that question. Come on, you need you're the you're the I wise can't. one. We, I'm the wise one. We need right? your wisdom <laughs> here, and not only do we need eat it, but good, the, eat good, the, eat, the, good. Uh, eat, eat good, eat good. Okay, you, you know, heard pay it. Here. it Pay attention. Pay it forward. Pay attention. You know, Pay attention. And, uh, build an audience. Yeah. You know, I'm mean, seriously, you know, it's like there are people who can't sell 50, uh, 50 seats in New York who can do an can do a tour of Europe. Yeah. Right. Because the, like I said earlier, I mean, the audience is more accepting, you know, and then mm -hmm. like they find you interesting because you come from far away. Just like, yeah. like back in my time, the Beatles were very interesting, you know, because they came from far away yeah. and there wasn't much happening. Unless you land, not so far away. Well, you know, they had funny accents, you know, yeah. and at that time it was like the Beach Hello, Club. Night, Bob. Right. You know, it's you know a right, I mean? mate. You know, it's Hello, like, oh, mate. I say that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Right? And, uh, this old geezer. Yeah, you know. And What's that's up, a, geezer, Bob? What did, what did you have before that? Give you me have, a cuppa. You know, the, you know, uh, you know, the Beach Boys singing Let's Go Surfing Now. Everybody's, Let's Go Surfing Now. Everybody's, everybody's surfing learning now. how. Come on, baby. Surfing you know, and all of a sudden, me. you know, and the girls are going nuts. You know, <laughs> it's like I'm like. If the girls are going nuts, something's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like not enough girls at shows. Yeah. There were no girls at Steel That's Gang true. Shows. You want the girls to come because if the girls come, the dudes follow. That's, that's right. That's the old showbiz yeah. adage. Girls spend money, guys don't. Yeah. No, it's interesting, right? But now longevity, it's, it's like, dude, man, just be true to, you know, do the music that means means something. You convey something. Try and say something. Yeah, emotion. You know, I mean, if you can, you know, because that's that's the whole thing of connecting, really. Mm -hmm. If you say, if you're if you're doing something that connects to people, bravo, I say, you know, because there's a lot of a lot of bands nowadays. It seems like they they, they like say they like Green Day, yeah. right? And then all they do is want to be Green Day too. You know, it's like there's already a Green Day, and they're very good yeah. at being Green Day, and you will never usurp them. You'll never be as good you as know, Green you, Day at being Green Day. You know, Day. it's sort of like Motley, like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like Motley Crue, we're coming back. I'm like, why? Hey, we just interviewed Steel Panther on the podcast. Oh, well, they're funny. They're you know, good, it's huh? like I, they're, they're, I, I, I enjoy them. I was on a they, you know, they, they stay in character. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's enter. I find it entertaining. It's, yeah. And I can understand how an audience finds it entertaining because audience it's like loves it. A bygone era. It is. You know, it's yeah. like my brother it's listened almost, to Poison. You know, you know what it's like? It was like going to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Everybody dresses up, and it's like the '80s, like that metal. Yeah, it felt like Poison a little. Like yeah, they were you know reminiscent of a lot of glam rock during yeah. the See, show. You know, there's a lot yeah. of people who were too young and saw their older brothers and sisters like going to Poison or Motley Crue and having coming back. We had a great time. We were so fucked up. Wow! But they mm -hmm. couldn't. Mom wouldn't let them go. So then, so right. Then so now, Steel now they have Steel Panther, so they can relive those days they feel they missed. Yeah. And they're like, okay, if you say so. You know, I mean. 
It's like I had Kiss as an opening act with the New York Dolls. Yeah. Right? In 74. Did they do full makeup then or was oh, it yeah. before makeup? Oh, yeah. They're full makeup. They, they came always, out swinging with makeup. They had, the first time I saw them out in, in Queens, they had makeup. When they came out and with I was, makeup for the first time, were the New York Dolls like, oh, this guy, these guys are kind of going over the top or were well, the New York Dolls? I remember oh, standing there going like, just like, first of all, the Dolls were like, look. They're a New York band. We're from New York. We're in this together. Yeah. You know, so we let them get away, which you would never let an opening act get away with. And that was his. Uh, Want to use your flash pots? Go ahead. Right. That stupid drum riser that goes up and down. We'd all get together to watch that because it was really rickety back then. Go, yeah. And it would drop a foot. And they go, yeah, come on. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, and it's like breathing fire. The first time I saw them breathe fire, he says, hey, on fire. Yeah. We're like, yeah, this is going really good for you, you know, whatever. And yeah. look where they are now. Now they're like Disney in a way. Yeah. You know, you know it's like, and people are. Talk about meet and greets that are expensive. Well, oh, uh, well, that's. Know, they're the first band that's going to, they're the first band that's going to, like, when they stop touring Gene and Paul, they're going to just get younger Jeans and Paul. They're going to keep. There's, oh, you think there'll be a revival? Oh, for sure. I mean, they're already doing it with like the two members in their band that aren't Ace and Peter. So all they're just going to do is replace Gene and Paul with others. Like, yeah, same Gene, makeup. Same makeup, and they can keep going. Dude, there's tons of Kiss, I mean, Kiss tribute bands like, right now. Dude, you know? gonna, so, But Kiss is going to become a Kiss tribute band. No, they but already the are the official one. It they makes already, sense. Really already are. are. Yeah. It really yeah. does make sense. It's like it might as well, like because you just said it's like Disney. It, 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 is. it is. It's sort of like people are you available want, you know? for the jean spot. I mean, listen, bro. They <laughs> they could do worse than me. Right. She walks by moonlight. No one. Jean is really as tall as you, knows. isn't he? You're a good fit. Yeah, I'm gonna sign up for it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, really a good thing, you know. So, who are you working with now? Are you do? Are you still out there being active with it, or are you kind of? No, I li I just um, I'm I've got three more shows with Fraley with Ace Fraley. Okay, one in. Uh, Tell him I said hi. I'm Indian, big, big fan. Big fan. I'd love he, to have him on the podcast. Yeah, we'd love to have him on the podcast. Really? Shout yeah, out Ace Fraley. Yeah, yeah. For you sure. Think, you think uh, he would do it? Oh yeah. You know, uh, maybe we'll I'll we'll ask him. Yeah, we'll ask him. He's got. I think he's got a record coming out. I'll bring it up to him. Yeah, bring yeah. it up. Yeah, that, would be be, like, that would be killer. Who's Joseph Arthur? Hey, but you know, like, who the fuck is that? Uh, oh, he's this guy. He's done Go worse. On. He's a nice guy going you know, in his pocket. You know, he's a and, guitar player. Yeah, yeah I can, I can know, rip. So I got, I'm doing like, uh, what, Indiana, uh, Chicago, and Where are you guys playing Detroit. in Chicago? I don't even, somewhere Rose, uh, outside Roseville or something yeah. like that. I don't remember the name. Well, I've it's been cool that he's it. doing like 1,000 people. I mean. Yeah. You know, that people come out, they like those songs. And yeah. the fact that it's like you don't have to pay eight hundred dollars to go to, to you know, and you can sing Deuce and Cold Gin and Oh, he does all those. Oh yeah. Oh, of yeah. course. Yeah, and that's rock. Detroit Rock City. Yeah. Stuff like that. I New York. Saw, I saw him at BB King's a couple of times Space over the last eight. ten yeah. years. Yeah. Played there a lot. And he's you know, in, in some ways he was he he was like the the every man in Kiss, everybody seems to like Ace. Yeah, but also, yeah, mm -hmm. everybody does like him. But he was the every man, but also kind of like the most mythical, like space ace, like space age before you uh, really knew. I get it. You had the demon. Yeah. yeah. You had Star Child. They're kind of like, yeah. Stay over there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the cat man, you know, and then you had yeah, an ace. the guy who was, oh, listen, all you got to do is watch him on that, that late night show uh, where he's, he's kind of lit and he's laughing like crazy. And that's why everybody loves him. He was that, he was that guy that, that every kid had a guy like that. What late at night a show? Uh, Tom. Uh, Snyder? Tom Snyder. Show. Oh, yeah. Oh, just to watch what, them. Seven, when, what year was that? I don't know. I don't know. But they're in makeup and. Uh, Bro, this. Oh, no. Never mind. My Paul mind. and Gene are just right. not happy. Tom Snyder. A lot yeah. of great interviews that, on yeah. Snyder. Because he was all fucked up and they thought he was too fucked up. Well, he was just laughing his he ass off. He was just having a good know? time. It's like, you know, so. What could I say? You know? And then it's like, yeah, so I, I go out and do that. I do. Uh, I, uh, I'm helping a couple. Uh, couple other uh, people get their their thing happening yeah uh, 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 a wonderful singer named tara elliott 
from Asbury Park. Shout out Tara Elliott. She's really good, man. She's really good. Right She's start doing shows next year with her. That's cool. You, gotta you still love it? Yeah, I, still, I love mixing shows, man. I like love I, I love shows. You yeah. Know? And that's why it's sort of like, honestly, I stay away from these big shows. Right. And I like, prefer concerts. Yeah. And because it's like, everybody about used... the music. Well, it's a, yeah, but it's also when they, you know, they become like Disney on ice when they're really big. Yeah. And... Um, like even the crew people, they're not individual. They're all like minions, you know. They're all like ball guys with goatees, wearing black and wearing black shorts, with a lot of tools, mm -hmm. and they keep their heads down because they want to keep their job. Because nowadays, the the industry is flooded with people, mm -hmm. you know, because they all want to be in show business, and it's like you. Well, there's not a lot of jobs, man. That's right. Especially when they you start miss the self. good times. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, like, so I don't, you know, it's like you guys go and because there's low balling going on now that there's no revenue yeah. from records, nobody wants to pay you what you're worth. So it's like I'd rather sit home. I'll stay with the people who, who I like, you know, because the actual. You know, I'm going to, I'm doing a uh, Led Zeppelin tomorrow, which is an all-girl Zeppelin band. Oh, I saw they were there playing. Yeah. Led Zeppelin. Oh, where are they playing? The, the Queen. Gramercy, yeah, Gramercy playing Gramercy Theater. Gramercy, playing Gramercy yeah, That's, that's sold out. I saw they sold that out. Yeah. yeah. And we're going I to, like that. I like, uh, I met the guitar player. Step, yeah, she's yeah, really she's good. Yeah, she's cool. What's her last name? Step Payne's. Yeah, shout out Step Payne's. And she's, uh, you know, it's like Paige came to see him play. He yeah, thinks they're great, yeah. you know, and it's like they do a good job. And they're, yeah, they're, fun, cool. to, they're fun to be with, you know, it's like... It's a lot better than seeing a band that looks like the Grateful Dead playing Zeppelin songs, I'll tell you that. And a lot more fun to hang around with. You yeah. know? And they're and, called Les Zeppelin. You yeah, got to love that. Yeah. And they have, you know, I've, I've actually been doing it for eight years. Yeah. And it's good. You know, I like doing it. Same thing, weekends. Do you I, tour manage and run front of house? I do. I don't, That's what you know, I like. I need yeah. a, I need a, uh, maybe we need to talk because I need a like, tour manager front of house. Yeah. How do you travel? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the big decision. You know? I, I'm getting ready to do two and a half month tour. It's going to be on bus. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we but, should talk. Yeah. But then I was already somebody doing that. Yeah. Oh, the, the good gig is already gone. It's already I gone. I want to get you for the crappy. Yeah. Ass but when I go out on, on my own in a sprinter, <laughs> I need you, bro. Where? I don't drive. Uh, oh, okay. that, that's how, that's what I, I let my driver's license yeah. expire. Yeah. So I can't take those gigs. Mine nice. expired too, but yeah. I got it re. Reason. Yeah, it's been so long since I drove a vehicle. That's thanks to Steely Dan. Let me tell you, you know, it's like it was like uh, I'm in a car with Becker, and we're going down the 405, and he goes, "Do you have a license?" And I go, "No." He goes, "Why not?" I go, "I let it, ex it expired because I was, you know, I wasn't paying attention." Yeah, right. That's and he something goes, you can let. And he goes, "My license expired too," and I go. How'd you rent this really expensive Mercedes? He goes, I have a really good travel agent. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I guess you do. He goes, what are you going to do if we get pulled over? Because I am going 85. And I go, I'm going to tell the cops I'm a hitchhiker and you picked me up. He goes, <laughs> he goes, you would sell me out like that? I go, listen, somebody's got to call the attorney to get you out of jail before you go into the general public, right? Okay, general population. All right, so, and that would be me. So I'm not going, am I going down with you? No. But I will be on my phone immediately going like, I don't know who this guy is, you know. But that's, that's the truth, you know. And, uh, but he was, I miss him dearly, I really do. He was a very, very smart guy. And he yeah. loved, he loved music, man. Yeah. I mean, I turn, I play him stuff. <laughs> we're, we're researching amps. Uh -huh. He was a big collector of gear, right? <clears throat> and he goes, what do you use? I go, I use a Sun Model T. And I was saying that as I got out of the door, right? And uh, at my loft, I went, oh, I should have said Sun Model T amp. Because he went right home and Googled up Sun Model T. And it was right? a car? No. What he uh, got was the band Sun. Uh, the King's a Drone, right? Uh-huh, yeah. And like the next day, it was like, that band. I go, yeah, they don't have a drummer. He goes, I, he goes they're so great. Yeah. You know, this is like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah, and then we got into the whole That's interesting. desert rock, stoner yeah. rock thing. Yeah. Right. Because he loved. Back to Dave Catching. Well, back to Dave Catching, back to Fu Manchu. He, he loved Fu Manchu. Yeah. Right. And um, 
In fact, their bass player builds fuzz box, built the fuzz box for Becker, for Walter Becker. Oh, cool. Yeah, Brad what, what did he call it? Creepy Fingers. Creepy Fingers. Yeah, Creepy, creepy Fingers. Creepy Fingers Fuzz? Good box, man. I'm that telling sounds you. good. He's a good, he's, he's a good fuzz guy. And uh, who else did he love? Uh, uh, but the Sun thing was really funny because there's no song for him. You mm. know, I was yeah, like, they're cool, though. Just, they're ah, drony the and fucking Only up. band that I could say that I went to see that was so loud they blur <laughs> they blurred my vision. Yeah. I'd never had that happen. That's that awesome. means that the vibrations were such a frequency mm. that it fucked with your optical nerve. Listen, I've done some loud shows, mm. right? And I did some stuff with sub bass. I could when I was doing arenas with Aerosmith, we had this thing about sub bass. Mm. And if there were bleachers, I'd put subs underneath them. Right, and I could at a point in the show, I could hit this really these subsonic things. If you had a, a tub of popcorn, the popcorn would fly out. That's amazing. Because I'd find the resonant frequency of the building. Yeah. Right, and you could do some some interesting things, but I'd never With the ever subs. ever blurred my vision. Dude, I, one thing I tell every sound engineer is: do not turn, uh, do not EQ out bass. I oh, need all not. the sub information. So many of them do though when they when you show up with an acoustic guitar, like oh we don't need subs. I'm like no, I want all no, the sub there's, information. There's, there. No, I get it. I, I, I hate totally it when it. they do when they carve that. Do you out. play in straight tuning or altered tuning? I play in 432. I tune to eight. Oh no shit! Yeah. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you find it? It, it matters. Has, it, I I know it matters. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I was wondering if you found that the the like. Does your audience, um, you know, I, before or after, you know, when you were A440 versus yeah. 432? Well, I don't know. I don't really know the difference. But so I you're do, a solo guy. I have solo. And, yeah, I, and, I, solo. and I tell the audience that I play 432 because some people ask me, hey, why aren't you playing harmonica anymore? And it's like, because they, they don't tune them to 432. Yeah, that. That's why. Somebody should come out with a line of harmonicas tuned to 432. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. That'll never happen. Um, we'll never say never, but you. Well, try, try getting a Hammond organ tuned to that. Yeah. yeah. It's never going to happen. Because so any words of advice for us before we wrap this up? As far as what? As far as survival it, on the road? Survival on the road, yeah. Eat local. Don't eat at chains. Don't you know, eat try and eat good. You know, it's difficult. I know it's difficult. Yeah. You know, I mean, I just went out and I just had to go to Del Taco. Yeah. I had to go to In and Out Burger. Sometimes, once. well, In and Out's okay. No, it's not. Yes, it It'd is. It'd be better off somewhere else. Well, right? Okay, but still. my guys, <laughs> we, we, my guys like to go to Panera Bread for breakfast. Mm. Right, and uh, which is fine because I eat oatmeal for breakfast. I don't eat eggs. What's the key to survival? Uh, longevity. Yeah. Uh, well, that's. Depends what you're talking about. Being a, as as like as a performing act, or just it, or just as a human being. As a human being. Yeah. Like it, how how have you made it this far? Um, try to make uh, first of all have multiple <laughs> multiple revenue streams. Yeah. Like don't base every, don't put all your eggs in one basket kind right. of thing. You know you yeah. should have, uh, you know other other things yeah because like true. the first quarter is always bad Jan because after the holidays january february march and the yeah. weather's bad for most of the country right it's not going to be a lot of work so you have to find uh you know me i got into the uh the vintage guitar thing a long time ago over uh -huh. 50 years ago right, right. and so uh, i do i do a lot of dealings with that i can i consult with manufacturers um you know i try i'm i try and help other people out um, I'm like I'm I'm doing this thing now where I'm trying to bring as many female front of house engineers into into the business as is possible. Why? Because it'll wreck the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean. What do you um, mean it'll wreck the? Well, thing? it's just like maybe people would behave better. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's different when you have. Uh, you know, it should. The, I, I know some women engineers were fantastic. There's always been women engineers, but now there seems to be more and more of them that want to get into doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, and I say, and I try and help them out. I let people, I come down, they, they, they can shadow me for a show if I yeah. find if they know what they're talking about. One of my it, favorites works in Philly at the Tin Angel, uh, formerly the Tin Angel, now works at the Locks, is Barbara. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. There's a lot Shout yeah. out Barbara. I That's guess, her name, right? Yeah, Barb. Yeah. 
Yeah, she's dope. Yeah, she's, she's one of my been favorites. Been around yeah. for a long time. I you think know? Pearl Jam has a front of house. Who's a monitor woman. engineer? Yeah. All right, you guys. I gotta wrap it because I gotta. I gotta go yeah. boxing at yeah. four thirty. Yeah. How long have we go gone? boxing? Go gone. gone. Um, an hour and ten or fifteen. Oh, that's cool. Do we have time for one question? Or you want to cut? Oh, it? oh no, yeah. of course. We, we taking calls from your audience. No, no. I wish we're get, we're gonna get we're gonna we'll have Night Bob Part Two once we get Just live. Just since you're but let's, you've been yeah. around for so long, is there one <sighs> story? Is there you're one so story in like Night rock Bob. history that people have a misconception of that don't know what really happened that you were at that you always correct people? Good question. On? Good question. Uh, I I could easily say the the Iggy Pop. Uh, you know, the Stooges at Max's. People to this day say that they saw him cut himself. Uh -huh. He did not he cut did not So cut the story himself. is that glass? Yeah, he fell on the glass. And it was funny because I said that in uh, Please Kill Me, right? Yeah. And uh, You got interviewed on that? Yeah. And he can't, I did a two-hour interview to get basically three, the, the three, like three lines. He three was, lines he had there. quite a gusher going. And then Night Bob's got something to say about yeah, that. He said, yeah, put, he said, put a piece of tape on it. But I was working in around the corner at Matt Humanos, right? And he came. Ooh, to, I fucking love that good right? show. It's gone. And it's gone. Oh, it's gone now. Yeah, it's they gone. kind of were overpriced, though. Listen, I if you bought say, it here, you paid too much. You paid too right? much. But you yeah. know what? That's but they had great listen, shit. I did buy a Dobro from them. Listen, you know what I mean? In the in yeah. the vintage guitar game, it's sort of like I have this. This is what I want. Like Matt would say, then go find another one. Mm -hmm. Good luck. You know? I know. But like, but Pop came no, to they see. Were good, good, good shop though. <laughs> so Pop comes to see me at Matt Humanoff's and goes like, "So you felt compelled to tell the truth?" Uh, and I was really? like, "Yeah, I kind of, you know, I, I, it's like, like I was, you were still bleeding, you know. What I mean, right. it's just like, I mean, people swear to this day, they go like, I saw him cut his chest." And I'm like, I don't know what show you were at. I said, but I was four feet away from the guy, and I was covered in blood. And I go, and you can look at the shows after that, because they took a three-day layoff. You can see where the stitches were, right? And they're about uh, an inch and a half, one, one here, and then one on his rib cage, right? There are puncture wounds, and they're stitched up. If he was slashing himself, it'd be long, you know, Long slashes like that. He just wouldn't be, you know. It's like, well, come on, yeah. You, know, you know, it doesn't look good. You know, I've seen, I saw him cut himself really bad with a steak knife out in, out in Hollywood. You know, that was a bloody mess too. But he doesn't do that no more. At a show. At a show, yeah. And it was like, you know, saw him pour hot wax on his chest too. It was like, ooh, that's got to be painful. But, <laughs> but that's a, that's a misconception. You know, I mean, I could also say that, you know, you could say that uh, people think that. Uh, the dolls were all fucked up all the time, and they weren't. Mm -hmm. it, was the, it didn't work that way. They liked to have a good time. Everybody liked to have a good time in the 70s. Yeah. But it wasn't, you know, the, their biggest problem was that they were too edgy. You know, the, they were, uh, I said this before many times, I said it in the Looking for Johnny documentary. I think the album cover hurt them, you know, because they didn't look like that on right. that first album, right? It was just, you know, back then, it was like that first impression is, is, was really important, not here. Like nowadays, you know. Nowadays, band, you can reinvent yourself every other week. Every 15 minutes. Every 15 you know? minutes. Just I'm, like, new, I'm brand new today. <laughs> I just woke up. I took all my pictures off Facebook. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have a new Instagram take, account. I, I know. I am the new Joseph Arthur. I'm about to take all my old shit down. This is my, Joseph this is Arthur, Joseph exactly. Arthur this is Joseph boxing Arthur. god. That's why yeah. I got to go now. Night Bob, you're yeah. the best man. Well, I'm trying to did help. Did you enjoy yeah. it? Yeah, I did. I was yeah. At, yeah, it was a good interview. Thank you. You good know, interview, I it was, right? It was kind of fun. Went to some different places. Yeah. You know, I hope there's some things there, you know, to, to, you know, I don't know. I don't know if there was enough in there. To re I'm telling you, the biggest thing to tell any band is to think globally and don't, don't you know, and you see too many people, too many bands that think that success in the United States is important. Right, or they want to feel mm -hmm. fulfilled, yeah. right? And I've seen a lot of bands blow it because it costs a lot of money to to tour, the to tour here, yeah, right? And the thing is that they, the people here are very fickle. Mm -hmm. They're with you, and then they move on to something else. Flavor of the month, flavor of the hour, flavor of Instagram, whatever. That if you can build an audience in Europe, that's a key a key to longevity on some onto some parts. I hope yeah. you're right. I'm going back. You should, man. I'm, I'm going telling back. you. I 
I'm man, telling it's you. It's already in the, it's in the books. I'm telling you. I've in seen, March. You know, I mean, it's a like. European tour. Well, you, do you know who Liza Colby? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Liza, yeah, I just did Liza, a Pilates class with her, with her recently. She's, they're very I mean, good. we happened to be at the Pilates. We didn't go together. They did six weeks in Europe. Shout out Liza. Did they make money? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But the thing is that they, they played Germany. They played Sweden. They played France. They went to, uh, they went to Spain, right? And it's like you have, you know, some bands are like, oh, we're not going to make any money. I'm like, you got to think long term. You can't think short term. You go there. If you get out without owing money, you're, you're good to go. Yeah. You know, and, but they'll come either. back the next time. And then they'll come back the next time. You know? And then suddenly you'll be Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Well, I don't know about day. that. Those, those days are gone, I think. Yeah. Really, do you'd have to be wearing a, a cowboy hat right now. Yeah. And you know. I got one. You know. Or the country. My thing. dog. Yeah. My pickup truck. <laughs> That's the biggest. They're the biggest buyers for vintage guitars right now. That's true. Kind of weird in a way. Yeah. For me, you know. Used to be Jack and Johnny. Now you're dealing with Toby and, and you know, it's like, you know, it's like, I want that gold top. Toby and Brad. Y'all got that gold top. I want that first year issue gold top. I go, they're hard to play. That's the first year. I'm like, you know what? Who am I to tell you what to play? Well, you're Night Bob. Uh, now and then. Thanks, Night Bob. More then. Well, it was very nice to be with you guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming. I would do this again. And I can talk, uh, tell, we, have, we have scratched, barely scratched the surface oh, yeah. of talking about what's wrong with New York or, uh, you know, and uh, why, why good bands come from us, other places. Where do you come from? I was actually born across the river in New Jersey. Okay. In Newark. So, tough guy. And then you grew up, and then, so you've been here sort of on these mean streets for a long time. Long time. Long time. I used to get out of high school and get right on the path train, go right over, get off at 8th Street, walk into, go buy, spend all the money I had at tickets at the Fillmore East, and buy records on the way back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because, you know, it's like, it's, the best thing I'd say is that music is always cyclic. Yeah. Right. And that something that worked back then will come back and rear its head, you know, another time. Yeah. Right. Like you're so, like, that's what happened with the stroke. Like the boy bands or the, you know, I mean, like there was Menudo. Right. And then there was the Backstreet Boys. Now you have these K-pop guys, you know, girls are always buy into that sort of, you know, androgynous look, not threatening, you know, girly boys. You know, uh, that, you know, sing and dance and all that, right? And the bad thing about those bands is, is that when those girls graduate from high school, they completely deny that band yeah. until, until like 15 years later mm -hmm. where they want to go back. sing those songs, right? And then yeah. they decide they want to the listen to The Strokes or something else, you know. I, was like, I found this band my dad used to listen to. They're called The Strokes. You know, <laughs> and, uh, that's where we're at now, Night Bob. We're getting hey, old. You know what? Yeah, I am getting. I am old. You nah, know? I I'm, think you're young as hell, dude. Well, uh, you know, it's like, listen, you know, it's like, it's still. It's you got better. another 20 years easy. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm thinking of leaving New York. I really am. Where would you go? About 25 miles north of See, here. that's yeah. not leaving. Well, I know, but it's just, you know. <laughs> that's, you know that's not yeah, leaving. To the Bronx? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> north. North. Where the, uh, I need a little more, a little more space. Uh, All right, and, guys. I got to go. So go punch some things. I got to go punch things. My, right. my boxing appointment starts at 4.30, and it's 4.18, just to show you how far down the line I've Where do you box? It. Trinity. Where's that? Downtown. Tribeca. Oh, yeah? Let's take the one. Yeah. Oh, the one. I love the one. My one, brother. One Thanks, gets me Night Bob. Thank you, Night Let's Bob. Let's do it again. Let's do you it know? again. It's yeah, like, then we can do part we, two. Once we, we get do, an aud audience questions. Ehud, thank you. You got it. Yeah, right. can, yeah definitely. I'll See take questions. See you later. Right on, right on. Right on, right on, right on, All right good. On. Bye. Hi, this is Joseph Arthur. Thanks for checking out Come to Where I'm From. Please support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash come to where I'm from. We are an independent podcast and any contributions you can make are greatly appreciated. <laughs>